Hey, this is CMD Channel. I'm Chris. This is MMA for you. I'm going to be doing my predictions for UFC Fight Night 48, Lee vs. Bisbing, which happens on August 23rd on UFC Fight Pass. Man, you know, there are a lot of guys on this card that, I, that are like pretty green. Um, a lot of Chinese fighters, some uh, UFC newbies. Uh, man, I, I actually did my due diligence so, and I actually managed to find video and watch video of everyone here, uh, every fighter here. Man, it was impossible, it was almost impossible to find Shinsho, Animal, and Zai. I'm not, like, uh, I found one fight of his from Pancreas 252. Uh, he's fighting Alberto Mina. And I found a fight with him where he fought Guns Favre. Sure, yeah, some of these, uh, I mean, finding video was hard, or, like, or, uh, I, I watched, like, The Ultimate Fighter China again, you know, and it's like, uh, some of those fights are so terrible, <laughs> you know, it's, so the, there aren't great fight. there aren't many great fighters on this card, uh, a couple of decent prospects, Kobe Covington's good, Yuti Sasaki, Alberto Mina's not too bad, I'll just say right now too. I don't have a lot of faith on a lot of these Chinese fighters, to be honest with you. Um, you know, seeing a lot of their grappling, that some of them have like zero Brazilian jiu-jitsu. So I mean, I'm gonna try to get through this. I'll get through this card, but you know, it's you got some like really low-level guys against like other low-level guys in some of these bouts. But uh, let's just get right to it. Okay, in the main event, we have Michael Bisbing versus Kung Lee. Kung Lee has a 9-2 and two record, 8 wins by KO or TKO, 1 win by decision. He also has 2 losses by KO or TKO. He's 42 years old on a 2-fight win streak. Um, the last time he fought was in November 2012. That's when he knocked out Rich Franklin. He has a Sancho background. Super unorthodox. I and mean, this guy goes for axe kicks, side kicks. Every spinning kick, spinning back fist. I mean, just a whole variety of kicks and spinning strikes in general. One thing about his background, and I noticed, especially with his punching, he's really accurate. Um, a lot of guys with traditional martial arts, I, I tend to notice a, a better accuracy with their striking. He has some really underrated wrestling, too, you know, uh, offensively and defensively. Uh, the thing is, though, he's pretty much a blown... Kung Lee is pretty much a blown-up Walter Waite. He doesn't fight very often, and it really shows in his cardio. His cardio is not very good. If you can get past, I'd say, two rounds with him, you know, you should be able to beat him. I think it's a five-round fight, too. Michael the Count Bisbane coming off the loss to Tim Kennedy... 24 and 6 record, 14 wins by KRT, 4 wins by sub. He also has two losses by KRT, who's 35 years old. He's uh, trading wins and losses, so he just lost to Kennedy. Should beat Lee, according to that stat. Uh, he turns up HB Ultimate along the likes of uh, Brandon Halsey. Um, he has really strong takedown defense, good overall counter wrestling. When you take this guy down, he gets back to his feet. Tim Kennedy don't manage to uh, keep him down there, uh, which is a testament to Tim Kennedy. Uh, Bisping also has really strong cardio. He's gone five rounds. Uh, he has high output and high volume striking. Um, the only thing with him is he's really susceptible to the overhand right. I mean, guys like Jorge Rivera, Jason Miller. Um, of course, Dan Henderson managed to knock him out with it. Um, I forgot who that one Korean Canadian fighter uh, whose name escapes me for the moment dropped him with an overhand right. He's just really susceptible to the overhand right. It just I don't know what it is, but he just has a weakness for it. Um, I gotta go with Michael Bisping though. I I think he can just outlast Kung Lee. I think there's a little danger here. I think Kung Lee in the first, maybe the second round, could potentially hit some sort of strike on him that could knock him down or knock him out. It's not outside of the realm of possibility. 
Um, I just see more Bisming, especially if the fight keeps going on. Just outlasting Kung Lee, getting him tired, boxing him up, and uh, getting him, you know, just pretty much winning the war of attrition uh, and the war of cardio. So, yeah, I'll go with Michael Bisming to win that one. Next fight after that, Stun Gun. Dong Hyun Kim fights uh, Tyron Woodley. Well, Woodley has a 13 and 3 record. Four wins by Kartika, five wins by Sub. He's 32 years old, training out of ATT Evolution, and I think just ATT in general. Uh, he's taking this fight on kind of short notice. It's supposed to be Hector Lombard versus Dong Young Kim. Um, I don't think it's that short of notice. He's coming off the loss to Roy McDonald. It's a pretty disappointing loss too. The way he lost, it's kind of like a deer, a deer in the headlights. Uh, he does have really strong wrestling, some heavy hands, and his overall boxing skills are improving. His cardio has not shown to be that great. Um, he does have a bad tendency to back himself up against the cage. It's not against just against Roy McDonald. You know, if he wants a time on Wood, uh, even if he wants a Carlos Condit fight, he backs himself up against the cage. Nate Marquardt fight backs himself up against the cage. One of his biggest problems uh, that he has with Kim, he has a 19 and 2 record with one draw and one no contest. Eight wins by KRTK, one win by sub. He also has two losses by KRTK. 32 years old on a four fight win streak. Um, most recently being John Hathaway with a spinning elbow, if I'm not mistaken. Really cool finish. He's big for 170. He has some strong judo, really strong top control. These days, though, he's electing to stand and brawl. So, his stand-up defense isn't that great. He gets hit clean quite often with his new style. But his new style is also very exciting. And he, he does show to have some power, you know. Um, he's also finding a guy that has some very uh, proven power as well on Tyron Woodley. Another thing with Woodley, he has some really underrated um, leg kicks as well, actually. Not just a Condit fight. Um, even the Rory McDonald fight, he kind of showed he has some pretty hard leg kicks. Um, with that said, I'm going to go with Tyron Woodley to win this one. Um, if he uses his wrestling, uh, he would most certainly win the fight. It might be kind of hard to take down Don Young Kim. Um, seeing how open Kim leaves himself to getting hit these days, knowing how hard that Tyron Woodley hits, um, I can see Woodley maybe hitting that overhand right on Kim as well. Um, like I said, it's not, the thing with Kim is it's more brawling than like technical fighting, so that's the thing. Uh, so yeah, I, I gotta go with Tyron Woodley to win this one. I think in a sense, he may be able to outstrike him. It, it's kind of tough to say though. Um, uh, you just never know if one of Kim's shots is gonna, you know, go through or something like that. Okay, next one after that, Zhang the Warrior LePeng fights Brendan O'Reilly. Okay, the only video I found of Brendan O'Reilly is when he lost to Cajun Johnson and the ultra, uh, Ultimate Fighter Nations. Uh, it's like the quarterfinal fight. Uh, he's 5-0 and with 1-0 no contest, 1-1 one by TKO, 2 wins by sub, 27 years old on a two-fight win streak, and that'll be his first fight in the UFC. Like I said, he fought in the t Ultimate Fighter Nations. Um, I, the only things I saw from that fight was that he, was kinda, he seemed pretty resilient, didn't have too bad of offensive takedown ability. With Zhang Mapeng, 7-7 seven and seven record with one draw, one win by KO, three wins by sub. He also has five losses by submission. He's 24 years old. He's the winner of the Ultimate Fighter China, beating Wang Sai. Um, a lot of people actually picked Wang Sai to, uh, didn't just pick him, they felt that he should have got the win there. Uh, what I saw from him, I also saw some fights from him in Ultimate Fighter China. Decent takedowns. A lot of these guys from Ultimate Fighter China did have good kicks. 
His overall stand up though outside of his kicks was just decent. His grappling was all right. It wasn't as terrible as some of the other competitors out of the Ultimate Fighter China. I you know it's hard to have a lot of faith in these uh like I said, it's just it's just that these Chinese fighters, they don't necessarily have the best training. MMA is still relatively new to them. But he is fighting a guy in Brandon O'Reilly. I, I, you know, I don't think that they set this fight up on the main card for LePeng to lose. I think they found the right guy that LePeng should be able to beat and, and possibly even look good against. Um, and, and like I said, I didn't get to see much from O'Reilly except for him losing to Cajun Johnson. Um, and, and just think, and like I said, just thinking of how the UFC set up this fight. Once again, main card fight, Ultimate Fighter China against a guy that has a total of six fights, who lost the you know, the quarterfinals of the Ultimate Fighter Nations. This is one of the somewhat weaker uh, ultimate fighters out there. You know, you got uh, like Elias Theodoro. He's actually pretty good. Chad Lepree doesn't like too bad. For the most part, those guys aren't the greatest. So, um, so yeah, I go with Zhang Lepang to win this one. Um, probably match to grappling. I like his kicks. And like I said, it, I... I just get the feeling that he's kind of being set, you know, they're kind of giving him a softball here, uh, Zhang LePang for the win there. Okay, in the Ultimate Fighter China Featherweight Tournament Final, we got Ning, uh, I, I might not be able to pronounce all these names, by the way, Ning uh, Gangyo, uh, is, that's how I pronounce it, versus uh, Jinping Yang. Okay, with Yang. Has a six and three record with one draw, two wins by KRTK, four wins by Sub. He's twenty eight years old on a two fight win streak. It's his first fight in the UFC. For in comparison to the other competitors on the Ultimate Fighter China, he did have some decent Brazilian Jiu Jitsu skills. He went for a lot of these high. I remember one fight I saw. He went for these like really high impact throws and slams, where he just starts. He'll pick up a guy and does this like. Almost like a, a, he like flipped a guy one time. He like yells before he like slams guys, you know. And it looks like he puts like all his might into it. A, a better fighter probably isn't gonna fall for his um, takedowns. Ning and Joe um, has a three and two record with one draw, two wins by TKO, one win by Sub. He's thirty two years old. It's his first fight in the UFC. He actually has a Greco-Roman background. I, I saw one of his fights outside of the Ultimate Fighter China as well. But what I also saw in the Ultimate Fighter China, it's kind of the same thing. He has some pretty wild striking that managed to be effective in the Ultimate Fighter China, actually. He throws some haymakers, and he gets himself off balance. He managed to land and knock out, I believe, two guys in the Ultimate Fighter China <laughs> with that style of striking. So he does. He has shown some heavy handedness, actually, um, considering how just wild his striking is. Um, with that compare, and also that he has, he does have a wrestling background. I'm gonna go with Ning Genjo to win that one. Um, <laughs> But, you know, the, you got these two, and any other, if they weren't, the UFC wasn't so aggressive with their global expansion, these guys would be on, like, Road FC and some regional promotions in the Asian, you know, in the Asian continent. Because, like, seriously, a lot of these guys aren't what I'd consider like UFC caliber. I know the definition for that is greatly changing, but it's a sense of like these guys would fit right in with regional level talent and they wouldn't be better than regional talent. They'd be they might lose. Actually I think a lot of these guys would lose to some of the better regional talent out there. 
Um, name game Joe to win that one, though. On to the prelims. Danny, the t cheesecake assassin, Mitchell fights Wang Sai. Hey, this one's kind of tough. Because Wang Sai has a 6-5 and five record with one draw. Four wins by K.R. Tico, two wins by Sub. He's 28 years old. He's trading wins and losses. In that sense, he should actually beat Mitchell. He is a finisher, actually. Um, he's a finalist of the Ultimate Fighter China. He actually seemed to be one of the more well-rounded guys on Ultimate Fighter China. His stand-up was pretty good. He had good kicks. His Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu is decent. Um, a lot of people thought that he should have gotten the nod over Zhang Lepeng. Danny, the cheesecake assassin, Mitchell has a 14 and 5 record with one draw, three wins by KRTK, nine wins by Sub. He has two losses by KRTK. He's 27 years old. Wants his fight against Igor Araujo. Um, he didn't do too bad. The Araujo is like legit Brazilian. I, th I believe they're saying he has a, a Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu black belt. I believe it. He was going for leg locks. He's always attacking. You know, he even went for a flying attack. So he does have some good Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. He's good off his back. We'll even go for a flying triangle. And he's going up against a guy like Wang Sai. I think Wang Sai's got the better stand-up. I don't think he has a better Jiu-Jitsu, though. I think... I gotta wonder if Danny Mitchell can even just pull guard and maybe even get a sweep. Uh, or get a triangle from his back. I, I honestly think... He might be able to pull that off, to, to pull guard on Wang Sai. Um, tough for me to say because I, I also kind of get the feeling that they might have set this up so that Wang Sai could get the win here. Um, I don't know. I just kind of feel that Danny Mitchell has shown to have the better Brazilian Jiu Jitsu skills. I think he might be able to get the fight to the floor, even if he has to pull guard. I think he's much better than Wang Sai on the ground. Um, you know, I'm going to go with the Cheesecake Assassin here. I'll go with Danny Mitchell to win this one, actually. I, I just think he can get the fight to the ground and work his Brazilian Jiu Jitsu game. Might even try for a leg lock. You know, he might roll for a leg lock. Who knows? Okay, next one after that Alberto Mina fights Shinzo, Shinsho, Animal, and Zai. Yeah, and I, this guy is the hardest guy to find video of. My man is fine. His Panker is 252 fight against Will Nolan. 8 and 1 record, 6 wins by KOTK, 2 wins by decision. He's 28 years old on a 6 fight win streak. It'll be his first fight in the UFC, and he's taking his fight on short notice. Um, Sheldon Westcott was actually supposed to fight Alberto Mina. Um, so, and I's taking this fight on like uh, just like a week or two notice here. He is actually a wrestling coach at Meiji University in Japan. Uh, he has a pretty good like wrestling background, like junior, you know. Just, yeah, like he just has a couple of accolades in uh, wrestling. I, I forgot what they were. Uh, he's actually won the uh, ADCC Abu Dhabi uh, Comet Club Asia Trials, if I'm not mistaken. Stand up. I actually got to see some of it in that Will Nolan fight. Decent. Kind of throwed a lot of short, kind of somewhat sloppy hooks. <laughs> that was what I saw from his stand up. Alberto Mina. 10 0 undefeated record. Four wins by KRTK. Six wins by Sub. He's 32 years old. Uh, he is a finisher. It's his first fight in the UFC. He has a judo black belt and a legit Brazilian jiu-jitsu black belt. Stand-up's kind of decent. Like I said, O'Man's oh, watched his fight with the Glenn Star, uh, Sparv. Uh, trains on Team Quest, grabbed his foot off a kick, took him down. He actually kept slamming him in full guard, kind of like Uriah Faber style. Got back to his feet. I think he lands a knee and then just finishes him with ground and pound. He does have some stand-up skill as well. Considering that Enzai took this fight on short notice. And Alberto Mina is actually 32. I don't know if you can call him a prospect at this point. But he's not a bad fighter by any means. Legit ground skills. Um, I'll go with Alberto Mina to win that one. Okay, next fight I thought Roland DeLorme fights Yuta Sasaki. 
It's actually really hard to find uh, video of Sasaki, to be perfectly honest with you. Um, I found one fight against uh, Manabe, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, yeah, he got a draw. He didn't look that great, though, you know? I mean, out of the new like Japanese prospects coming to the UFC, you know, there's uh, Kyoji Horiguchi, um, Ten uh, Michinori Tanaka, who, who's coming off a win over Roland Delorme. And now Yuta Sasaki is actually, like, the next guy there. Um, the next, like, big prospect out of Japan. He has a 17-0 record with uh, two draws. Two wins by KO Tiko, eight wins by Sub. He's 24 years old on a seven-fight win streak. It's his first fight in the UFC. Um, I, I read that he actually did some training and team alpha male for this fight. Um, I saw that the, the fight I saw him against was two years ago. His striking didn't actually look that great. And it looked like he had a hard time taking down his opponent. Um, however, he does have... Uh, he did win the Abu Dhabi Combat Club Asia Trials as well as um, Enzai. Uh, most of his submissions are by rear naked choke. That tells me he's very good at the back take. Um, from what I read, I didn't get to see too much of his striking, you know. He's pretty long. I think he's like 5'10 for a bantamweight. He's pretty tall. Doesn't always use his reach. Roland DeLorme, 9-3 record with one no contest. Two wins by Tico, six wins by Sab. He's 30 years old on a two-fight losing streak. Um, and that's the, like, I believe it's Alex Caceres and Tanaka. So they aren't, like, the worst losses. But he's pretty much being used as a guy to, like, test new and somewhat hyped prospects, you know? Uh, his Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu skills are good. He's good in the scramble. His striking's average. One problem with Ron DeLorme, though, is he, he can be way too content off his back. And that worries me a lot in this fight. Um... It's hard for me to say. You got the guy making uh, his first fight in the UFC versus a like, pretty solid co competitor in DeLorme. Tanaka also had the judo skills to take DeLorme down. I, I don't know about Sasaki's takedown ability. Um, you know, I'm actually kind of going against the grain here in a sense because I'm going with hype more than anything else here. I'm going with Sasaki here, but as far as skill set goes, I, I haven't seen. I've been reading a lot of stuff about Sasaki. I saw one video of Sasaki where I wasn't terribly impressed with him, so I can't really say from watching an actual video how good he is. I can only go with hearsay. But Delorme, I kind of know what to expect, you know? So, you know, I'm kind of going with hype here. Um, Yuta Sasaki for the win. Just from what I'm reading, he seems like a really good prospect. But, um, unfortunately, I don't have the video evidence to totally back up what I'm reading. Okay, next one I thought Yang. Uh, Wang and Yang fights Colby Covington. Okay, so with Wang and Wang, uh, he has a 2 0 undefeated record with both wins by TKO. He's training at a Phuket top team with the likes of like JJ Ambrose and Andrew Leon. Um, I know Ambrose fought in like Bellator. He's never been past the first round. He's an ultimate fighter China contestant. His stand-up's decent. His kicks are good. A lot of those guys out ultimate fighter China. I believe have like Sonda backgrounds. So they all have like good kicks. His grappling though, I saw one one of his bouts in Ultimate Fighter China. It's pretty weak. <laughs> and his overall BJJ, like pretty weak. Colby Covington. Looks like a pretty good prospect. 5 0 undefeated record. Three wins by submission, two wins by decision. He's only 26 years old. Trains out at top camp in ATT. That'll be his first fight in the UFC. Um, and he's a strong wrestler. His background two time Pac 10 champion. And a Division One All American. I managed to watch one fight of his. Gets a takedown pretty easily. You know, I, I think he can just use his superior wrestling to win this one. Um, probably the superior grappler at this point is one. And considering the K 
camp he trains at. Uh, he might actually be a pretty good prospect. So Colby Covington for the win. Yep. Jeez, I need to make sure. Okay, next fight after that. We have Milana Dudova fighting Elizabeth Phillips. Yeah, Elizabeth Phillips has a 4 and 2 record, 2 wins by KOTK, 1 win by Sub. Trains out of Sig Jitsu with the likes of Juliana Pena and Michael Chiesa. Um, I remember her fight against Valerie Latorna. She's got a good chin. She's really game. She's always pushing forward, really aggressive, kind of a brawler. Her technical stand up, just not there. She's not very technically sound. Stand up defense wasn't that good. She, uh, I actually saw one of her fights in the UFC, before the UFC. Decent wrestling. You know, not great, but decent. Milana Dudova, 10 and 3 record, 3 wins by KOTK, 6 wins by sub. She also has 2 losses by submission. 25 years old on a 2 fight win streak. It'll be her first fight in the UFC. She does have a legit judo background. Um, her old grappling is pretty good. When she's on top, she actually has some decent ground and pound. Um, striking, it's alright. It's actually not too sloppy, to be honest with you. I saw one of her fights, though, where she was getting creamed. I forgot, uh, by Pianzad. Right? She's getting mounted, back mounted, and just pounded on. Looks like she can kind of get pressured. And, and the thing with Elizabeth Phillips is she is a pressure fighter. That's the thing. Which could also mean she falls into a clinch and gets judo toss, which actually wouldn't be surprising as well. This fight's actually kind of hard for me to call because I don't know if this is the best stylistic matchup for Milana due to the buff. But I'll go with Milana to win this one. I hope she can take the fight to the ground, get top position, go for ground and pound. She goes for some pretty ill-advised um, submissions though. Like she's in half guard. And from half guard, she'll go for, like, the straight arm bar, like, you know, the one where you're, like, lying down and whatnot. Um, where you're lying on your back, excuse me. Um, and then, like, from there, she transitions to, like, leg locks. I, I don't know if at this level uh, her opponents are going to fall for that. So I'm a bit iffy on this pick here. But I'll go with Milana Dudova to win this one. And finally, we got Royston Wee versus Yao Ziku. So, Yao is a tough China contestant. He has a 1-1 one one rec pro record. One of his wins being by submission. He's only 22 years old. His loss, I don't know what happened, but it was at zero seconds of... I mean, it was before the fight even happened. I don't know what happened. And his win happened in 37 seconds. So it's his first fight in the UFC. I did manage to see some of his fights in Ultimate Fighter China. In his first fight, he managed to get the, his opponent to the ground. And, and actually showed some pretty good ground and pound. In his second fight, though, he was getting out grappled. And showed some pretty overall weak Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu skills. I mean, it was just sloppy, scant scrambling, white belt level stuff. You know what I mean? I'm just... Sloppy scrambles, you know, couldn't maintain top position, didn't really seem to know how to finish <laughs> uh, a submission, you know, that type of thing. With Royston Wee, 3 0 undefeated record, both wins by sub, one win by decision. He's 27 years old. He's notable for being the first Singapore national to be found in the UFC. He f actually fought the first Filipino national, David Galera. And had a pretty terrible fight. I mean, it was seriously takedown, top control. Galera, the only thing Galera knew how to do was like a hip sweep, which he could not get. Royston, we managed to stay in top control, win the fight. Didn't even show too much ground bound. So there's really not much I can say about we except that his wrestling looked kind of decent and against someone of this level he might he should be able to actually hit takedowns his top control didn't look too bad with that said I'll go with Royston Wee to win this one if I'm the UFC 
I'm going to throw Royston Wee with as many softballs as I can. You know, he's a guy that can help you get into the new market. And, you know, you got this 3-0 and Royston Wee versus 1-1 and Yao Zaku. I mean, seriously, the, the guy's not very good, <laughs> you know? Heck, both these guys aren't very good. But I think Royston Wee is probably the better of the two, the better grappler of the two. Royston Wee for the win here. As you can tell, I was pretty exasperated <laughs> doing the show. It's because finding video of these guys was really hard. <laughs> really hard, and some of these guys just aren't very good. You know? Um, let's recap, though. On, to the, on the main card, you got Michael. B I got Michael Bisming beating Kung Lee. Tyron Woodley over Dong Young Kim. Zhang LePeng over Brendan O'Reilly. And Nang Gangyo beating Zhang Peng Yang. On the prelims, I have Danny the Cheesecake Assassin Mitchell beating Wang Tsai. Alberto Mino over Shinsho uh, Anzai. Yuta Sasaki over Roland DeLorme. Colby Covington beating Wang and Ying. Milana Dudova over Elizabeth Phillips. And Royston Wee over Yao Ziku. So that's it for my predictions for UFC Fight Night 48. If you have any comments, just leave them below. And that's it for MMA for you. Thank you guys very much.